Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Kids Bible Study. Welcome to another week. Uh, it is a new month. It's May. Uh, I hope that you guys are uh, excited for what God has for you guys. And um, yesterday we had a very uh, first in our church. We had our first at home um, Lord's Table. Uh, to many of us, uh, especially for many of us that's been in church, that probably was a weird experience, but it was some kind of, I mean, in a way, it's enlightening because uh, even in the midst of trouble, we showed uh, this virus, we showed really to the world that we're still remembering uh, the wonderful sacrifice that our Lord has done on the cross, the suffering that He did, uh, the pain that He had to go through. Um, we remember those and we, we celebrate that that He has taken that role for us um, so that we don't have to, um, to die for that, for our, for our, for our sins. And, and, and honestly, that is a moment of, um, of just pure gratitude, of just appreciation and just love and just remembering that wonderful uh, deed that our Lord has done. And so I hope that um, you guys uh, saw your parents and maybe if you guys were baptized before, you guys were able to participate in this uh, very first, very momentous um, uh, event that we had yesterday with the Lord's Table. Uh, but today, we're going to continue on our what we started last uh, Friday, which is talking about the characteristics of light and how it relates to our God. Uh, there's a lot of things that the light does that our God does exactly the same thing and so um, and again he is the light of the world he is the light that's needed in all men and so i hope that you um you're learning and so let's first uh, uh sing a song okay this is a little light of mine some of you guys may know it some of you guys may don't uh but the words will be on the screen so ready as you start off with your finger like this okay because this is your candle okay just got just gonna fire right there. Okay. Now don't blow it. Don't blow it. Okay. Be careful with it. Be careful with it. Don't tip it. Don't tip it. Okay. All right. So if you have your finger, okay, this is a little line of mine. Ready? You're gonna wave it like this because we're gonna let it shine. Okay. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Okay, everybody got that tune on? Next, right, let's try it again. Ready? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Now, don't let Satan blow it out. Let's sing that song. Right? Ready? Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Okay, next one. Hide it under a bushel? No. Okay, so this is your bushel. This bushel is like a basket. Okay, hiding it. So ready? Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. That's great singing, guys. Don't let your light be hid. Don't let your light be blown out. Okay? Let it shine. The Bible says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, that's what it's like to be a Christian. That's what it's like to be a believer, a follower of God, is that we now have light to this dark world. You know, kids... I don't know if you guys have been watching the news or I don't know if you guys have, are, are really up to date of what's happening. I mean, everybody in this world is just depressed and sad and hopeless. Uh, what does that mean? They're, they're all just 
just moping around. They're like, well, I, I can't find my friends. Oh, I can't go to work. Oh, I, and, and everybody's just, just, just crying out and just, just very sad. But see, that's because they're trusting on the material things of this world. These people, uh, yeah, they're, they're going through some trials, but they can find comfort like we can find comfort in our God. The Bible says, trust in the Lord, right? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways. Okay, you know what that means? Every single thing in food, in jobs, in money, in friendships, in relationships, in everything, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. So that means talk to him. Go to Him, trust in Him, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. See, if we don't know what the future holds, why don't we go to the one who does? And that's God. And so let's continue on in our study of the basics of the Bible. So today we are continuing on day one. All right, kids, what did God create in day one? Oh, come on. Not everybody's answering. What did God create in day one? God created light. Everybody say that with me. Day one, God created light. Okay. Now, we understand that God can create light because He is powerful, because He is omniscient, because He is omnipotent, uh, because He is sovereign. Because he is the creator of all. But there's one thing that we learned last week, a word. Okay? Ready? It's the word ether eternal. Everybody say that with me. Eternal. Now, what does that mean? Eternal means... Oh, come on, guys. You guys should remember this. No beginning and no end. Say that with me. Eternal means no beginning and no end. See, that's our God. Before the foundation of this world, before the beginning of time... God is. God existed before anything else. God was just there, and He still is just there. Um, that's our God. He's eternal. And so when God created this world, okay, in a way, He's revealing Himself to us. And again, you can see that in all of creation. You can see that there's a designer. There's an intelligence. There's, there's, it's not out of random. Okay? Through just the general the creation. See, that's what revelation is. Revelation is when God reveals Himself to us. Okay? Whether that's be something that we would never know or that's uh, otherwise unknowable. Okay? We can never find that out. Um, so God reveals us that. And so God reveals to the first book of the Bible. What's the first book of the Bible? Ah, uh, it's not John. It's not Mark. It's not Matthew. It's Genesis, Genesis, right? Genesis, the book of beginnings. And so we see in the book of Genesis, God created light. And so in the book of Genesis, God reveals himself to us. See, remember, there's two ways that God reveals himself. Two ways, okay? Two ways. First one is general revelation. Everybody say that with me. General revelation. One more time. General revelation. And that's through, that's when God reveals Himself through His creation and through our conscience. See, every single one of us, we have conscience. We can understand what's right and what's wrong. We can understand when we're doing something that's proper and something that's not so proper. Okay, And so that's the thing. It's, it's, we have conscience in our hearts. It's written in our hearts, and we all have that. See, like you guys know that when you're about to steal that, one dollar from your mom there's something that's eating you up in your heart okay that's the conscience okay you know that it's wrong um see here's the thing how come people know that it, that murdering people is wrong because it's written in our hearts how come people know that it's wrong to steal from somebody because it's in their hearts the word the the, the conscience uh is god's um way of revealing that there's morality and there's truth in in this world. And where does that come from? It has to come from God. It doesn't come from us. Okay? It doesn't we don't we didn't think about that. We don't make that. 
Okay, it's written in our hearts, but that's because God wrote it in our hearts. So there's two ways that general revelation is made, right? Two ways that general revelation is shown. One is through the creation. Everybody say that with me. Creation. Okay, so every single thing. You look everywhere, there's got to be a design. So creation. Second thing is through our conscience. Okay, so what creates uh, general revelation? Creation and conscience. Okay? And we're focusing on that, okay? We're focusing on that today, uh, still, uh, as we finish up the characteristics of light. So last week, right, we learned there's four, so far, we've gone through four characteristics that light does and that our God also do the same. Now, anybody remember? Anybody remember? Light, first one, light never... Ah, light never changes light never changes it's always fixed stable and immutable just like our god second thing light never dirties light never dirties it can never be contaminated it's always pure third thing light never bows to darkness that's one of my favorite ones there light never bows to darkness it pushes the darkness away and last thing that we learned last week is light never Fails. Light never fails. So we're going to finish up three more okay, today. And so I hope that you guys are ready. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful time of learning. I pray that these people that's watching, whether it's kids or adults, I pray that they're learning something new. And I pray that they're learning something that it's applicable in their lives. And I thank you, Lord, that even right now we have a bright and sunny day. I pray that you just help us understand that... Um, that you are the light of this world and that we need you. We need you, especially in these times of darkness. We ask this in Jesus Christ, and we pray. And God should say, Amen. So, fifth thing, fifth thing, ready? Light makes everything visible. Light makes everything visible. You know, as, as we talked about how uh, light pushes darkness, okay? It, it makes everything visible to the point that you can see each item you can see each things okay it, it exposes what's wrong and exposes what's right um, in the middle of darkness you cannot see all that you know you guys turn off the light in your room you're not gonna see anything you're not gonna see where the bed is you may remember where the bed is but you don't exactly know where to measure or to 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 maneuver it um, so light makes everything visible number four or number six this, these two are related, that's why. Light makes everything else understandable. Light makes everything else understandable. See, we fail to know because we fail to see. We fail to know because we fail to see. You know, as, as you guys go in the middle of darkness, okay? You're not going to see details. You're not going to see little, um, you know, forms. Uh, you're always going to be just seeing some kind of just a dark form, right? Maybe just, just a little silhouette of things. But you're not going to see the details of things. Like for example, right now, okay, there's a bright and shiny sun above us, okay? And, and just uh, earlier, I, I drove my mom, right, to work. Now, to drive, it's important that I can see, right? If, if, if you're... If you're, if I had, you know, blinders on me, if I had a, a, a blindfold on me, I won't be able to drive. I mean, I'll probably turn and I could probably feel how that turn is, but would I be exactly on the line? No, I need my eyes to see where the lanes are. I need to see how much turn do I have. I need to see even the traffic light, whether, whether it's, if, even if I can hear the little click, you know, uh, on it, I'm not going to be able to know whether it's red, yellow, or green. I need to see it so I can either approach or stop. See, light makes everything visible, but also light makes everything understandable. See, the Bible gives us that, the Bible says that the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A lot of times, we go through our lives and we don't understand anything. Like even right now, a lot of Christians still even questions, uh, even, you know, questions why this coronavirus is with us. 
None of us know the full extent of what God is doing. We don't. We can never uh, fully understand it in our own logic why God will allow this virus to take over the lives of every single person. Uh, we we would never fully understand uh, see uh, the 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 in our logic the the reasoning behind us. But see, we can understand though, as we see from the light of the Bible, one. I, one thing I can say for sure is that, hey, God wanted some quiet time for us so we can listen to Him. Hey, this quarantine time, we now stopped all games. We stopped all distractions. We stopped every, um, you know, everything that would, would hinder us from listening to Him. It, it, this is... I, for me, I think this is one of the, the reasons why God wanted us, all of us, the whole world, really, to stop for a moment. Is that we can learn from Him. That we can listen to Him. You know, there's a lot of people who's doing nothing at home right now. Maybe you guys are not doing anything at home right now. Um... You know, you before you would wake up uh, early, you would dress up, you would go take a shower, you would eat your breakfast, then you go rushing out the door. I mean, during that time, maybe you didn't have time to read your Bible. Maybe during that time, you weren't even able to pray. Now, then, then you go to school for so many hours, and during that time, you're not going to be taking a pause out of the middle of the day to when your teacher's teaching, you know? Maybe maybe during snack time, uh, you're thinking, oh, maybe I could read my Bible then, but I mean, come on. You just want to go out and play because you've been sitting in the classroom for hours. During lunchtime, sure, you pray for your lunch, but you because you're so hungry, you rush through it. You just go, Lord, thank you so much for the food. Amen. <laughs> and then And then when you get home, well... You're already tired. You just want to watch TV. You just want to play. And so what happens? You forget to read your Bible. And yes, maybe, maybe in the evening, you and your, your parents, you guys have an evening devotional. But, but at that time, you're, you're tired. And you did all your homework. And you're done. And you're like, ah, I don't want to do it anymore. And so you just listen. But then you're slowly falling asleep. <laughs> and then you go to sleep. What happened? See, I, I do believe that this quarantine time was meant for us to slow things down in our life so that we can listen to God. We can, we, can, we can pause and we can get closer to Him. Like, how many, like what is your guess's routine today, the, today? What's your routine every morning now? You know, do you, do you wake up late? I mean, that's fine. Rest is fine, you know. But... Is there more time now to read your Bible? Is there more time now to pray? Is there more time now to be with your family? Is there more time now to, uh, to listen to Bible messages? Is there, is there more time now to, uh, to do something for God? Is there more time now? Yes. Yes, there's more time now. You know, another thing that, that I can say is, is one, one another lesson that I can think from this is that as we see the fear on everybody's eyes, the fear of this COVID-19, the fear of, oh, if you're getting contracting it, the fear of, of you know, uh, uh, that you can, you can die in, in, in a couple of days and that, you know, if you get it, you're going to go to a hospital and you're going to be fighting for your life. You know, one more thing that I, I see from this is that we now start to value life. We start to be now more careful with what li our life is. We're not living recklessly anymore. Yeah, sure, there's some people outside that, that doesn't care. Maybe there's some people outside that's like, you know, driving crazy and, and they're, you know, they're not trying to protect themselves. They're not washing their hands. They're just, you know, hanging out with people. Well, that, that's, that's some, sometimes we get some people like that. But I think most people now, they're isolating and they're understanding, hey, there's a... Uh, there's something, something else. And maybe they're starting to think, 
Is there a God in heaven? Is there a God controlling this? Like, I want my life to be safe. Is there a God that I can call to? You know, all of these things are happening and all of these things are, are possible. All of these things are lessons that we can learn. And honestly, all of this could be answered from the Word of God. Because God is the light that shines and it makes us everything understand. The light, the, light uh, the Bible, through the Word of God and through God's will, we can see that everything, we can see that everything in our life has a purpose. I want you guys to turn to John, okay? John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Now, I, I, I didn't have this in my notes, but and I didn't have this, um, but, but I think this is important because the Holy Spirit, the one that dwells in us, and the one that touches our hearts, okay? This is what He does, okay? This is what He does. The Bible says in John 14, okay? John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Notice what the purpose, one of the purposes, one of the missions of the Holy Spirit in our life is to do this, to teach you all things and to bring all things to your remembrance. You know, there's a lot of things in our life that we may not understand. There's a lot of things that's going on in our lives that we are confused about. Well, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit can teach us how to deal with them. The, the Bible says that the, when we read the Bible and we, we try to understand it, the Holy Spirit gives the illumination. Okay? The Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us from the Word of God what's God's will in our life. He gives light, illumination. By the way, illuminate um, is, the word, is, is related to light. To shine in the middle of darkness. And that's what's happening here. He will teach us all things. But here's another thing. He's the, and this is, this is what I love. He says, And bring all things to your remembrance. Means that, yeah, we will forget some things. Yeah, we're going to go through some trials and some problems. And we will start to say, I, I don't get it. And then the Holy Spirit will then bring us that remembrance. Hey, remember what God said? Hey, remember what... What God has told you before. Hey, remember the God, what God has promised? He will bring all things to remembrance. You know, this is, this is what's great with light. Is that light makes everything visible, but also light makes everything understandable. And the last thing is this. Light make life possible. Number seven, light makes life possible. You know, how many guys have a backyard or maybe a little plant? You know, I have a, I have a little plant right here with me, okay? Um, now, some of you guys, uh, I, I teach fourth grade to, to eighth grade, and, you know, we go through life science, and one of the things in life science is we learn something called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? Photo, photo is a Greek word that's come from light, and synthesis is to create, right? So with light, right, photosynthesis, what happens is that every plant, especially plants that have green, okay, this is, this is partly green, right? Uh, any plant that has green uh, is, has a, not necessarily an organ okay, in their leaves that transfer transforms light into energy, okay, and that energy is used to mix with uh, the water uh, from the ground that they create, and and they produce pretty much food, okay. The photosynthesis is used to create life, to create food, and that's what we that's what we eat. That's what plant animals eat when they whenever they eat the plant. And, um, or animals eat whenever they eat the plants. And so what happens is without light, 
if I cover up this plant without light, it's not going to grow as quickly and it's not going to grow as more, you know, as, as pretty as this. You see all the, the colors of the, the flowers and all that? That's only possible because there's enough light that's coming in to help this plant grow. And light makes life possible. You see, we need light. There, by the way, there's, there's, there's a vitamin that we get when we go outside. The, some, many doctors are, are saying that, you know, that when you go outside, you get vitamin from the sunlight. And we need that. You need that. See, light makes life possible. And, and, and this light, just like our God, makes our life possible. See, our life would nothing, would be nothing, would be walking in the middle of darkness. We would be like this world who's lost hope, who's looking for that substance, who's looking for some kind of um, assurance, some kind of uh, way out. But we already know life. We found light. In Jesus. You know, I want you guys to turn to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Okay. John chapter 1. The Bible says this. Okay. We're gonna, I'm going to read a couple of verses. Verse 1. The Bible says this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And then we jump to 9, verse 9. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. See, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came, not, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You know what the Bible here is saying? The Bible here is saying, it's talking about Jesus. Jesus was life that we need. And that life is the light that men needed. But see, what happened is men was full of darkness. What made that, that darkness? Sin. We all are sinners. You and I are sinners. Every single person in this world is a sinner. And we could not comprehend that light. We did not want to comprehend that light. We wanted to run away from that light. Okay? Because we love darkness rather than light. We loved our sin rather than light. But the light still came. That true light still came to this world. And that light came to light to every man. That, that, that phrase right there in verse 9 says, which lighted every man. Meaning any person in this world, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, no matter what background you have, you can have this light that comes from Jesus. The Bible says, the light came to this world. It was made by, the world was, was made by Him. Okay? So everything that we are is attributed to our God. But, again, the Bible says, the world knew Him not. The world did not care. Why? Because we loved our sin. But He still came. He still dwelled with us. Why? So that we may beheld His glory. So that we may see our sin. See, Jesus came to this earth, okay, 
And when he started his ministry, he came to the lost. The Bible says, uh, uh, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. He came to the ones who are brokenhearted. He came to the ones who are messed up. He came to the ones who's confused. He came to the ones who was prideful. He came to the ones who was uh, full of material things. He came to every single person. He touched every single uh, lives that he met. And the thing is that the Bible says that, that he showed them the truth. He illuminated the truth to them. Many of these people, Jewish people, really, they understood the law. They had the law. They know what is right. They know what God was saying, but they could not fully understand it until they met Jesus. And they understood that there is judgment coming. And even Jesus preached on that multiple times. You know, Jesus preached more on hell than heaven. And he said, repent, repent. What does repentance mean? Repentance means to turn from the old life to a new. A complete 180. A complete turning around. We're, not long, we're no longer going this way. We're going the complete opposite. If you're going straight, nope, you're going this way now. If I'm going this way, nope, I'm going this way. Now. See, it's a complete opposite. Repent. And see, Jesus preached that because every single person were going on a path that leads to destruction, a path that leads to hell, a path that leads to a condemnation. And so Jesus said, believe in me. That's what he says there. But many as received him, them gave you power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. See, here's the thing. When we believe in Jesus, we turn. We no longer look at this world. We no longer the, 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 the sin of this world. We no longer embrace that. We turn. And we start walking with what God has. We, we start walking right looking at Jesus. See, this is, this, is where, this is where it all matters. Every single one of us will die. Every single one of us will face death. And every single one of us will sit in judgment. And God will judge us. He would look at our life. He would look at our actions. They will look at all the sin and all the good deeds that we have. And you know what's going to happen? The sin that we have is too, too heavy. Do you know? Instead of us being judged, Jesus will step up and say, I paid for him already. He's mine. He accepted me. He believed in me. He trusted in me. He's now mine. And, and they would open the book of life and they would see your name in there. That's only if you believe. If you don't, your name will not be in the book of life and the weight of your sin will condemn you to hell. So the Bible says this, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says in Ephesians that we are saved not by our works, not by the things that we can do, but we're saved by the grace of God, which is in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. See, don't be living in the darkness. Don't be living in the, the, the dark corners of this life. And don't, don't let yourself fall short because now you know that there is hope that you can find in Jesus. There is now life eternal. There is now a life that can save you from hell. I want you guys, one last verse before I finish. One last verse. 
John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 24, that says this. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that hath sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. This is now the light that I'm giving you, and this is the light that I got, the word of God is now giving you. The truth. Every single one of us deserves hell because of the sin that we have done, because of the laws we have broken against our God. We deserve hell. But Jesus took that spot for us. He paid that debt with His life. He paid that debt with His blood. He washed it away clean. We are now free. From that death but that only happens when you accept what he has done when you believe in Jesus Christ Jesus Christ alone we all deserve hell but because of Jesus we can put our trust in him that he has done all that he has done everything the Bible says for whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth on Him can call out to Him right now. You can, you, can, you can pray something like this. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I deserve to go to hell. I know that you have died on the cross and paid for my sins. I want to accept you Please come into my heart and be my Savior. If you say something like that and you believe in your heart that Jesus is the only way to salvation, the Bible says that you're now saved. You now have a new life. The light of the Word now is giving you a life that's now new possible. There are seven things that we learn from light. Number one, light never changes. Number two, light never dirties. Number three, light never bows to darkness. Number four, light never fails. Number five, light makes everything visible. Number six, light makes everything understandable. And lastly, life, light makes life possible. You now have this opportunity. The Word of God is now light to you. You have seen it, but now you have to accept it. See, Christians, as we reflect on the first day, okay, as this is the very crucial fundamental item before all creation was ever made, light was necessary. Before the plants was ever made, before the animals was ever made, before the mountains were ever made, you know, God thought, what was most crucial, and that's light. I urge you, Christian, before you start anything else in your day, before you start even breakfast, before you even go to the shower, start with seeking that light. Start with having the light shine through you. Start with the Word of God. Start with prayer. Before anything else, before anything else, because this is the most important part to creating a perfect world, a perfect day, we start with the Word of God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful time. I pray for all these kids. I pray for all these people watching. Lord, as we conclude the first day of creation, I pray, Lord, that we... Begin a new life that starts with the light of this world, with the light that gives life, with a light that always illuminates, a light that exposes the darkness, the sin, a light that never changes, a light that's always pure. Lord, thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. I pray now, Lord, for those people 
who are confused, who has now lost hope, who are, 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 are still seeking the light, I pray that they can find that in Jesus today. And if somebody here watching has prayed this prayer who, or accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I want to hear from you. Lord, I pray that you would guide them to finding a church, a Bible-believing, Christ-centered church. And I pray that they would guide them as they seek the truth more from your word. As the Holy Spirit has has imparted in himself, his job is to teach all things and to bring all things to remembrance. Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord, now. Keep that in remembrance. Yet there is a light. It makes all life possible. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us, Lord. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the protection that you've given us throughout this time. I pray for all the workers that's in the front lines, essential, the healthcare, every single one of them, Lord, that's putting their lives on the, on the line so that all life can still be possible and so all life can still function. Lord, I pray that you show your truth, especially for the ones who are not saved yet. We ask this in Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you guys for watching. This one's a little longer, but that's okay. It's because we had a little bit of a song. And um, I hope that you will um, remember there's light we can always go to. There's always light that can always show us what's wrong. There's always light that can show us what's right. A light that can direct our path. Remember, guys. Day one, God created light because it's essential for everything else to be possible. Let's come back to that every morning, every day. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless. Mm -hmm.